Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. I am in London. It's a beautiful day, which means there's no rain, which is kind of rare. And we are in a very special place. Now, yes, we're in front of Olibar Brown, as you can see, with some incredible Bond celebratory branding going on. And appropriately enough, I'm pretty much head to toe Olibar Brown, Olibar Brown jacket. I've got the zipper shirt. I've got the Sea Island pants. Oh, Crockett and Joan shoes. And I've got an Omega watch. I think we're talking about Bond brands, but not like you're used to. There's a celebration going on at a very famous place in London called the Burlington Arcade. And we have a VIP tour given by the Burlington Arcade and a bunch of the Bond brands. And we're gonna see it today. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 007 version of the Burlington Arcade. Okay, welcome to the Burlington Arcade here in the heart of uh, London's Mayfair. Um, you are in the oldest shopping arcade in the United Kingdom. All of the others are basically based on what you see here. Because believe it or believe it or not, we were the first people to put a roof and shops facing each other. When you consider our weather, it took us a long time to catch on to that. We only did it from 18, 19 onwards. So we're, we're almost 203 years old, okay? so. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the arcade and why we were originally built and then I'll go on to talk about the boutiques and why we have this fantastic James Bond installation within the arcade. Okay, So we opened to the public on the 20th of March 1819 and that's just after the Napoleonic Wars. So my predecessors, they would have been Beatles, they were Beatles and they came from a unit in the British Army. Uh, the Tenth Fusards. Now, when I say the British Army, the British Army in those days wasn't as large as it is now. The aristocracy used to raise their own regiments, and the Cavendish family and the Devonshire family they raised the Tenth Fusards. Okay, so my uniform that I'm wearing today is a combination of a stately home footman and the dress uniform of the regiment. All right, and you will see it was basically columns with gates. And the beadle would have sat there, and yes or no. And the boys and girls would have come up inside the column and then handed the purchase to the, yeah? <laughs> the wonderful thing about the arcade is it's always been about quality of service and experience, yeah? And if you look up the arcade now, <laughs> it's an incredible experience. I mean, you know, the new Bond movie, has brought so many people to central London. It is incredible, no. absolutely incredible. Yesterday afternoon, we had guys walking around, posing in the arches, and in the middle of the arcade, we have a gun barrel. Yeah, yeah we have a mirrored gun barrel. Okay. I guarantee you, while you're here today, you will see somebody do the classic James Bond yeah. pose in the middle of the gun barrel, okay? <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, I'll take the picture, I'll take the picture. But yesterday afternoon, we had the world premiere, and we had people walking around in dinner jackets and ladies in cocktail dresses coming to the arcade. Yeah, I, I've got a gentleman from Scotland coming. I'm meeting him at eight o'clock tomorrow morning so that he can do that pose. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming in early, get, putting all my wig on, and we're going to pose in the gun barrel at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. Eight hundred people show up. No, but this this is what's happening. It, it, we're very fortunate. Globetrotter provide Mr. Bond with his luggage. Crockett and Jones provide Mr. Bond with his shoes. Yeah. Amiga provide Mr. Bond with his watches, one of which is there. <laughs> and it's a beautiful watch, oh, by the way. Yeah, I, wonder, I better take this one off because I feel a bit embarrassed now. <laughs> it's the wrong brand, it's the wrong brand, it's the wrong brand. I'll take that one off. And then, of course, we have Enfield that provide him with, with the jumpers that he wears within the arcade. I was just thinking there's one there, look, there's one there. I'm tempted to go for one myself, actually, but I don't think I've got the physique to carry it off, but we'll see. I, I, might, I, I think I might go for it. I think I might go for it. So, um, they are our real connections to Mr. Bond. Uh, 
and it's it's something that this installation that you're seeing in front of you I was actually here overnight while I did it and the attention to detail is incredible absolutely incredible the gun barrel itself when we're closed of an evening the gun barrel change the color within the gun barrel changes and we have people standing at the gates taking pictures of it all night long wow, wow. yeah so um so who, it, who's sort of organized is it the Burlington Arcade itself that it's, it's a combination of the Burlington Arcade the stakeholders as they're called Eon and Universal okay, okay. um lots and lots of man hours involved this was planned yeah. like something like four to six months ago this yeah long yeah time. but it but it has yeah. been incredible yeah. I, I would suggest that since the since it was finished we've probably had an increase in footfall of about 10 to 15 percent and wow. which we will monitor as time goes on yeah. okay yeah. Um, later on in the tour I will uh, take you into the Bollinger Bar because I should have mentioned that as we were talking about our stakeholders earlier on. Okay? The Bollinger Bar, is, from what I understand, is the first Bollinger Bar independent anywhere. Okay? Now I found out earlier on today that apparently Bollinger produces 1% of the world champagne. Okay? And it's, it's, it, it's funny enough, we, 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 we opened in 1819 and they were founded in 1829, so we can actually claim to be a bit older than them. This is good though, because we bring 2% of the world. <laughs> well, you got, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, they need to up their production then. They do. <laughs> they okay, do. Mark, the carpet. The car um, okay. Is this the Omega strap? This, Colors. yes, this is the Omega strap that I believe he wears in the movie, No Time to Die. And this was specially manufactured for us in Belgium. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Um, and. So Again, pe <laughs> people are just literally almost being sucked in off the street yeah. to come yeah. to yeah. come walk on the carpet. And what's so funny is you will literally see people almost use the the lines, and they will yeah. uh, they will walk down and they love it. They absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Um, and the arches, each individual, the arches are are just proving such a great Instagram moment for us. Yeah. It. it it's quite interesting. In my 19 and a half years in the arcade, I obviously predate Instagram, yeah? And Ladder A here, which is a unique looking shop because it is gold. What you see is gold, it's all gold leaf, yeah? Now that was actually put in prior to Instagram, but the idea was that people would stop and yeah. be photographed. Yeah. And it okay. still worked, uh, yeah. It's a, a lure, so. Yeah. And it still works to this day. Exactly. People still like to stop and have their picture so taken. Is this uh, sort of the first time you do like a you know, set up this big? We've we've had um, we've had installations in the arcade in the past with uh, different designers, but this is the first time we've done something on this scale, yeah. other than our Christmas decorations. Yeah. 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 Okay, and it's been a learning curve for us yeah. as well as the the, the the other parties involved, yeah. because you know it's, it makes a statement yeah. it really does make yeah. a statement yeah. and 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 pe what we're finding is people are coming in and they want to engage with us normally they just ask us about the arcade and other bits of, or directions because everything here is about sort of quality of service yeah. everything within the arcade is about quality of service so this again enables us to interact with the public we can talk about the brands yeah. we can engage with the public and you know Listen to the voices as we walk through the arcade. There are so many different accents. There is no Burlington Arcade customer as such. And there probably isn't, and I've only learned this really over the last couple of weeks, there isn't a James Bond fan as such. There isn't, it, it's, the appeal is incredible. The age group, the diversity of the people, the national, uh, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Anyway, so as we, as we go on through, um, Everybody has this image of Bond. People are, you know, Bond is perceived as a certain way. Actually, he's not, is he at all? He's, he's quite, you know, he's... Different people see different things, yeah? People, and it's quite ironic, people have an image of the Burlington Arcade being quite English and quite stuffy. You've probably, all, we're only about 30 meters, 40 meters in the arcade, and you've probably already, already realized that that's completely wrong. Yeah, so 
as you walk through, we, we, obviously we have all these um, innards of uh, the cogs of, of the watches. So, this is one of our newer boutiques and it has a bar in the basement. So if you make a purchase there and you want to have a little gin and tonic afterwards, you can. You can nip downstairs and have a gin and tonic. Or maybe it should be a martini, possibly, at the possibly. moment. It should, it should be a martini. We, we accept everything. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, they have a little artisan workshop in the boutique. Right. Um, so it's all about experience. Now people like to have experiences. After the pandemic, when everyone was locked indoors and just doing internet shopping, we're finding that people like to have an experience when they come and shop now. So in here, you, you can literally go through the color you want for the outside, the color you want for the lining, the color you want for the straps, and then you can have it with your initials as well. And the great thing about a, a Globetrotter piece of luggage, have any of you ever held one? How light it is? We own some, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Well, you know, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's a vulcanized fiber, yeah. carbon. Yeah, 100%. I think mean, it's 14 layers altogether. That's right. Yeah. It will literally last you a lifetime. Last you a lifetime. And the wonderful thing is, if it does get battered about a little bit when you're traveling, you can bring it here, it will be repaired, and it will look like new when you get it back. But a little, okay, a little, a little tip for you, just in case you didn't know, if you do find it's looking a little bit damaged on the outside, if you get a rubber, do you remember the rubbers you used to have on the end of your pencils at oh, school? Sure. The yeah? Thing, yeah. No kidding. Seriously. Well, Seriously. It will bring it back up. Won't make it perfect, but it will bring it back up and make it look reasonably good again. Okay. So the, these are a fantastic investment. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but it, they did bring out a James Bond piece of luggage and they're all numbered, limited edition. Daniel Craig does not have 007. I think he has number 64 or 68, something like that. Wow. So, but yeah, so I want to know who's got 007, because <laughs> that's the one to have. But incredible luggage, a beautiful boutique. If you get the opportunity to go into the Globetrotter boutique later on today, you should really do so. I okay. think they were supposed to take us down into the basement. So it's okay, do you want to do that later or do you want to do it now? We can do it um, now. We can probably do it now if you yeah, want. Yeah, come, follow, follow me. Michael, can we? Yes. Yeah. Come in. Welcome. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Michael. I'm the manager here at Globetrotter in London. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take you downstairs and show you the bar. <laughs> so, yes, follow me. <laughs> So this is a newest addition to our store where we have a little secret bar downstairs. Um, it's also our bespoke consultation area too. Oh goodness. Wow. I can give you a little sneak peek on the inside. Yeah, please. These are all the... Oh wow. Oh, wow. Harris, look at this. Oh, that is beautiful. So these are all the... Oh, sorry. Sorry, there you go. Those are all the different options. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so well lit too. That's what I love about it. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of colors and a lot of materials to show. We also have, these are all the different linings that you can choose. It's almost spoiled for choice on the different sort of. Absolutely beautiful. Down to the important business. Can I pour everyone a glass of Bollinger? Oh, uh, <laughs> say no. That's okay. amazing, thank you. <laughs> So this is the limited edition carbon fiber 007 case. It is spotted in the actual film in Matera, coming out of the back of the uh, Aston Martin. However, this one wasn't designed specifically for the film. It has to do with the 007 franchise as a whole. Uh, it's one of the very few cases made out of carbon fiber that we've ever done. Uh, and it does tend to drive the price point uh, quite high. It is the most expensive piece we do at 3,000 pounds. And it is quite, something to look at. It has this very unique texture. It has this Omega watch strap inspired webbing belt on the outside and it is limited to 700 pieces. So if you want one, I suggest you get one soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the tan hold all is yours. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. produced anymore, right? Or no, it was um, actually part of a, a seasonal collection called the Riviera, and uh, we did a whole collection of leather pieces in that particular color. 
And when they were filming, this is when we had it in stock. Um, so yeah, it was all sort of available right. at the same time. So. so that cannot be made bespoke or anything like that. That's, that piece is gone. It is gone. We might do something similar in the future because we've had a lot of inquiries about it since the film, as you can imagine. Sure. Um, but it will, we'll be doing something very similar to it uh, or in a similar colorway in the future. So the No Time to Die cases, the, the ones that are seen in the film, the ocean green, the ones that are uh, in the film are a little bit different to the ones we sell in store. They don't have any wheels, so they have a very sort of traditional um, old world feel about them that they are made to be carried by porters rather than you know, just carried around by like your average traveler like you or I. So the ones that we do have, are they're trying to combine the the, the sort of, what's the word? It's just that pure elegance and class of the cases in the film, but then also the mod cons of having an extendable trolley okay. handle and the four wheels. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Luxury, but usability at the same time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Trying to make a practical element. Carry on or the check inside? Yeah, carry, on. carry on. Carry on, sure. That's, so what do, you, what do you think, Harris? Are you compelled? I would say it's more so like an app. This it seems to be a habit, but uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Didn't you buy a watch the last time we went shopping together? That. Um, but oh. you know what? I think we've. Uh, this is gonna this is head back to New York tomorrow. I think I think you're right. I'm I'm, uh, I'm in shock. Right it's gonna go on its first travel. It is literally London. Hey, he threw to JFK. Just like Bond and Living Let Die. So, oh, I see that. There we go. And that's a very 1970s color scheme, too. So that's perfect. Yeah. Well, it's amazing how when the light hits it, it obviously is darker and then it gets light. It's, yeah. Well, you couldn't pick the better time the day after the premiere to get this. So nice job, man. Thank you. I think I watched a YouTube channel. It's my favorite. Let me start with this one. Danielle. Danielle's is Becca. Oh, hey, hi. You uh, interrupted Jack and I. So we're in the Omega shop here in Burlington Arcade, and we're sitting at a facsimile of M's desk. And all the accoutrements are here, which is pretty amazing. You've got Judy Dench, and of course you have the original Bernard Lee. It's kind of amazing and auspicious. Plus, you're surrounded by the different watches made of James Bond. If you're lucky enough, maybe you're even wearing one, which makes it even cooler. But I'm telling you, the uh, environment is incredibly immersive, and this makes for a great picture opportunity but there's so much more I've got to show you the watches let's take a look So if even the carpeting that you step on at Omega Bond House, it looks like the strap from No Time to Die. The details are amazing. Look at the pillows, they're branded as well. But what you're treated with are these types of moments. For example, we've got the Seamaster Planet Ocean here. We've got the Aqua Terra. Those should look extremely familiar. But right alongside of it, you've got props from the movie. So it does create and an element but there isn't just one there's two for you quantum of solace lovers for example it's got the chronometer from quantum of solace and of course the run and the q pen and look at the q pen it's it's white it's not silver the universal export piece absolutely amazing 
And what would it be without Casino Royale? Yeah, you've got the watches that I think a lot of you have with the chips as well as the Montenegro Casino Royale pieces. By the way, Greg Williams prints in black and white dot the place, which is so nice, really creates a classic view. And here we are with a couple of other things. So this was the watch, of course, I own it, I love it. Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, and Die Another Day with some of the Caltrops that you see drop out. Again, the props and everything, absolutely amazing. And this immersive environment really does bring you back to all the nostalgic moments of the film. And Goldeneye, let's not forget that Omega was there with Goldeneye. And it's complete with Spectre, and one of the best scenes when he has his Aston Martin and all the different props. There they are, with an appropriate ring. <laughs> Dotted by, obviously, the, the very coveted watches from that movie. I know some of you have them out there. But here they are, and what's nice about it is the lighting, you can probably see, is museum quality lighting. So you really do get a sense of what these look like in their bright, shiny way almost like jewelry. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.